Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today I'm planting another hydrangea and I know I've planted a lot in our garden this summer, but this one is unlike any others that I have showed you thus far. This is a pinky winky hydrangea tree. And I think it's so gorgeous, so unique looking. I thought you guys would really enjoy seeing it. Um, so you might see them in a nursery with a tag um, that says standard or lollipop. That's another couple of names that they're known by when they're in this form. And I just think that they're such a great focal point for a garden. And the spot that I have here is right by our back sunroom door. And this boxwood hedge was here when we moved in and it was back planted with a bunch of vinca and a larch and the larch did not survive the winter. In fact, the larch that was here, I actually sold to the previous owner really early last spring before we bought the house and he planted it here. It didn't survive and I think I know why now. Aaron came out here to help me dig the hole and I wanted to show you what we found. First of all, look at how huge this hole is. This is what came out of there. So this big chunk of concrete was about eight to 10 inches below the surface of the soil. And Aaron, I, I could hear the shovel hit the concrete and then he kept like trying to find where the edge was and it just kept going. And so our best guess is that when they poured the sidewalk, which is right on the other side of the boxwood hedge, they had extra concrete that they just needed to dump somewhere. So that, I mean, cause it's just like this one little piece and then there's weird, like, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, look at this. Like weird things coming off the bottom of it. We have some guys coming to help um, us move this because there's no way that Aaron and that I'm gonna attempt lifting this and I don't think Aaron can do it by himself. So anyway, you just never know what you're gonna find when you're out in the garden digging holes um, and it's a garden that is kind of new to you still. So anyway, back to the hydrangea. So like I said, this is called a pinky winky. This is not how they usually grow. Like if they were to grow just on their own, they would grow in a shrub form. So they'd grow six to eight feet tall and wide. Beautiful hydrangea shrub. This has been trained into this shape. Um, so oftentimes when you find these at a nursery, they're quite a bit more expensive than you would find the shrub version to be. And the reason for that is because of how long and it took to grow it to this stage and the skill it involved. So that's typically why they cost a little bit more money, a little more investment, but they are so different than just, you know, whatever your run of the mill um, plant that you can, you know, shrub you can put in the ground. This just is a more of a focal point. The other thing I love about this, in fact, we'll flash a picture on the screen is the color that these flowers change. So they start off a really beautiful, brilliant white. And then as the summer progresses to fall, the base of the panicle, so this is called a panicle right here, where the blooms start all the way to the tip, the base of the panicles will start turning a really vibrant pink, but the panicles will continue to grow. So they'll continue to lengthen out and white flowers will still keep emerging on the tips, which uh, makes you end up with a duo toned, a two toned bloom, that vibrant pink on the bottom, the bright white on the top, and it's just spectacular. And the longest one they've measured to this point is 16 inches. That is a huge flower panicle. So you can imagine this tree, you know, once it's established in the ground, it's gotten a little bit more wide and, you know, full. You can imagine it with these huge, long, beautifully colored flowers. And I've seen the pictures that are really similar, like hydrangeas that look very, very similar to this kind of coloring that have been shared a ton on social media. So I thought you guys would get a kick out of seeing kind of how they start off and then what they kind of morph to and hopefully we'll be able to give you some updates on this as we go. And a couple other things that make this a really good choice I think for my garden is that it's a zone three through eight and I live in a zone five so I know it's really winter hardy. In fact being that it's a zone three this would actually be a really good contender to put in a container because typically if you're wanting to overwinter a shrub or a perennial or an evergreen in a container you want to choose one that's two zones lower than your current growing zone and that way it gives you a buffer a little bit more safe I guess uh, to winter them through. So this is a really good one that way. It's also really adaptable to different soil types, which is super helpful in my case because we have really alkaline soil. Hydrangeas we typically know as plants that like it a little bit more on the neutral to acidic side. So the fact that this one's more adaptable makes it that much easier for me to have success with it in my garden. And it can also take quite a bit of sun or a little bit more shade than some other varieties and still perform really well. So I'm just gonna plant it in this big old hole that I've got going on here. I've got some soil amendments here. I'm still gonna toss in the hole because I do it with everything. So I'm gonna toss in a little holly tone. Um, this is from a spoma. I don't need a lot. I usually just put in 
like a good handful in the bottom of the hole, maybe two handfuls since this is a huge hole. Just like that. And then I'll be tossing in just a little compost just to give it a nice little base. And now what I think I'm gonna do is add more native soil in and create more of a proper size hole for this root ball and kind of mix it in with the amendments that I put in there. Oh, there's a worm. I love it when I find big earthworms in my garden. It's a sign of healthy soil. So this root ball is not root bound at all. So I'm not gonna tease the roots at all and try to break up any root memory because there's nothing going on that's bad. So I'm just gonna set it down where I think I want it. And I think this is the good side. So I'm gonna stand back and look and make sure I like the positioning before I pack it in. Oh, nope, I need to twist it just a little bit. So I can't decide quite if I want it right on the corner or if I want to kind of back it up a little bit so it fills up the space a little bit more evenly. So I'm just gonna play with it a little bit and see where I like it. All right, guys, I got it right where I want it. I kind of went in between, like halfway in between the house and the boxwood hedge. I think it looks really pretty. And this is the really beautiful side. When you look at a shrub or a tree, there's typically like a front and a back. And this is a little tiny bit more flat on the back side, but it will fill in and it'll catch up with the rest of the plant after it has a chance to root in and grow a little bit. Um, but this is the side we see. This is the side we walk down the sidewalk right here and we'll see this every single day multiple times a day so i'm really loving it i filled in the hole um in fact actually i didn't fill in the hole aaron filled in the hole with soil um, and i got it packed in really nicely and then we kind of redid the drip a little bit so let me show you kind of where it starts so the drip system in this area was kind of already in place in fact this is where the access is so this was here when we moved in so what i did was i came off of that with a little piece of tubing and did an elbow so that because that the drip tubing is a little bit rigid um, in that you kind of have to curve it nicely. It doesn't bend. If it bends, it kinks. This is half inch brown tubing. It's got holes every 18 inches uh, that release water, which I really like to do that in my flower beds because then I feel like it gives kind of a full coverage watering instead of individual, you know, emitters to individual plants because that would take me forever. I like to plant a lot of stuff. So anyway, came off that and then I went right around to that side and connected to an existing piece of drip tubing by the boxwood hedge there because that piece runs the entire distance on all the boxwoods and it comes out right here. So this piece right here was existing already. So I just connected in and then I swooped a little piece right here so that when the time comes for me to plant this area, I've got the drip system in place and I don't have to mess with that. So, you know, eventually I might plant something kind of tallish and thin right in this area and then underplant something really pretty in here. I haven't decided exactly what yet, but it's nice to know that the water is set up and ready to go. So the last thing I'm going to do is mulch this area with a little bit of planting compost. That way it looks tidy and clean. And then I will water in the hydrangea and I'm done.